Amongst its rolling hills and valleys, along its city's streets and sprawling neighborhoods, a surge of creative energy is flowing through Rwanda. I want to be an icon for my country so that I can make my country go higher. A place where dreamers are waking up to a new reality. I never expected people to wear something that was made by me and I couldn't be any more proud. Where visionaries have a clear view of the opportunities that lie ahead. There is a lot of potential because there's a lot of talent here. They are photographers, filmmakers, visual artists, entertainers and more. This is a generation of makers rewriting Rwanda's future. We have a lot of stories to tell. This is Inside Africa. Known as the land of a thousand hills, Rwanda is covered with a landscape that is sure to inspire. Welcome to the multimedia studio section of Envision. Here in the Rukiri 1 section of the capital city, more than 1,400 meters above sea level, lies a place built to bring inspired ideas to life. Envision is a media arts collective and social enterprise based in Kigali, and we have a multimedia studio, uh, art gallery, and co-working space that we use to provide different services and facilities for up-and-coming artists. recently painted murals throughout this wall area. The idea of creating lines and shapes and colors to represent creativity and movements that's coming from the different arts that are produced from these spaces. The fluidity of water and creativity. So that's kind of the inspiration behind these murals. Peter Lee was born and raised just outside the city of New Orleans in the southern United States. He attended university in Texas and Paris too. But it's in this landlocked Central African country where he believes to have found his calling. Being in Rwanda is special to me and now it's the place where I call home because this is where I feel that uh, there's the most connection to me personally and professionally. It's a journey that started in 2015 while working as a filmmaker and video producer in California. And one day I came across a post online for a job working as a counselor and teacher for youth in Rwanda. So it was a high school for orphaned youth and there was a position to come and work for a year developing their media program. In his two years teaching at the school, Peter was blown away by the talent his students possessed, but discovered that upon graduation, they faced a lack of access to resources like facilities, equipment, and other like-minded individuals. So that was the motivation behind Envision, was to create a space for young people that they could continue to develop their talents by providing them the right space and opportunities uh, to develop their careers. He moved back to the United States, sold his car, raised some startup capital, purchased the latest production equipment, and returned to Rwanda in 2018 with a vision and a plan. Down here is where we've converted uh, an empty storage room into uh, our photo studio. I could see what the space looks like physically with the paintings on the walls, with the different artists working collectively in the same space. And so I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like. Every blank space is an opportunity to show off something, or every, every empty room is an opportunity to create something. So this is our editing studio where we have different uh, computers and programs that the producers can use to edit photos, edit video, do animation. So this is the corridor which leads to our music and audio production studio. This is where we're building a audio studio, a record label, which will be used for recording music, uh, producing soundtracks, also mixing and mastering video and film. This entire facility, which is referred to as the Multimedia Studio, is part of a recent expansion to the Envision campus that opened in June of 2020, and most recently grew to include a cafe as well. 
We're just trying to continue to service the market, to continue to provide good experiences, good food, good drink, and just have a nice, comfortable setting where artists can feel like they can get together and hang out, and uh, they should feel like they're home. We wanted this to feel like a neighborhood hangout, and so people just feel like this is somewhere they can come in, like this is their home. Right now we are in the Envision Gallery and the Visual Arts Studio, but this space is a house that we've converted to be a gallery and a workspace. But before, this is where we had all of our different video producers and photographers and fine artists working in the same space. But now we just use this space for the visual arts and also just for displaying for exhibitions. I didn't plan Envision to be at the level that it is now. I started with the simple idea of creating a space mostly focused on multimedia production but it's expanded kind of naturally based on the natural flow of how the artists used Envision and also the way that I saw that there was potential of like developing this kind of project in Rwanda. Sitting near the top of one of Kigali's many hills and overlooking the Rukiri One section of the city is a place helping to elevate Rwanda's creative sector to new heights. Yeah, we had this idea for this concept to create a diagram about the creative process, which is Envision the Possibilities, which is encouraging people to think about the uh, different possibilities and potential of not only their projects, but also their future in this industry. Envision Rwanda is a media art collective and social enterprise launched in April 2018 by American filmmaker Peter Lee. It's a place that artists can get together, that they can build their skills, develop their talents, so that as a community we can kind of develop the creative industry here and promote and share our work. According to Peter, around 50 full-time members are currently utilizing the space and its services regularly. We have a wide range of artists, ranging from photographers, filmmakers, painters, fashion designers, so any kind of creative arts. Since its inception, he estimates that they have collaborated and worked with approximately 200 Rwandans in the creative industry. Our target is to young and upcoming artists that have shown some level of talent and have shown that they're really motivated in being one of the kind of change makers in the industry. And these days you can see there's a growing number of young people that are seeing the arts as a potential to have a career. I wanted to be on a journey of my own. The one I had, you could risk and take some decisions by yourself. The piece I'm going to perform today is a, it's called Lost Dreams and I wrote it for artists, dedicating to artists. I thought of our lives was a structure, just like my parents and my grandparents. So it's mainly to encourage them that you can be lost sometimes in your dreams, but the only thing is being lost is also part of the growth in your career. Greta Ingabire is a young aspiring artist who began exploring her artistic talent from an early age. When I was still a young girl, I used to write things and also make drawings. But as I grew up, it became poetry. And as I grew up, drawings became something that I adore doing. So when I reached in high school, I got myself this freedom of doing both of them. Her poetry evolved into spoken word and her drawings into paintings. She has also added acting to her resume. I would say it's a pretty challenging thing because sometimes I'm focused on poetry or the acting part and it's going to be something that I'm, I'll keep on doing as much as I'm able to do them. Whether sitting on the porch at the cafe drafting a new poem, painting on the patio looking out over the valley below, Recording in the multimedia studio's new audio booth, artists like Greta don't just find inspiration here, they also get the support they need to succeed. Art is something that is very important in their lives, and I feel like as an artist we have a big responsibility to share what we have, but also we need different people to be with us so that this art can bring impact in the lives of people. Every Envision artist is someone that I've met with at least to see where they are in their career. Um, some of them I've known for five to six years, some of them I've met recently. But I try to at least be a little bit of a role model and also like a mentor. Hey! Hey! How's that? 
Right. What are you working on? Uh, a woman. I think Rwandan people have started to understand what art is into their lives and also the value of an artist into the world. And so far I think it's good and it will keep on improving with time. There is a lot of opportunity in this field because there is a gap of cinematographers. We don't have uh, too many cinematographers, but we have uh, a lot of stories to tell. Pacific Mujemana began his career as a video photographer in 2015. But within Rwanda's nascent creative industry, he found it difficult to break through. I just wanted to tell Rwandan stories about how Rwandan live, the story that can impact people's lives. In 2018, while still a student studying multimedia disciplines, he and Peter met for the first time. And from that point on, Pacific's career began to take off. Envision means like a family to me. They are the one who were helping me to develop my career, to develop my life. Seeing Pacifique grow as a producer and artist is something that's been inspiring because you can just see how in a very short period of time how an artist can develop into probably one of the top videographers in the country right now. Also a licensed drone operator which we were able to help him you know, through that process of getting the proper training. To see someone at his level in about maybe less than two years develop this really top standard uh, has been you know, pretty inspirational. In Rwanda, a country known for its breathtaking scenery, guerrilla adventure treks, and coffee, a new industry is emerging. The fact that spaces like Envision are able to operate and thrive shows that there is a budding number of artists that are interested in making the arts part of their career, and also there's a bigger community that's willing to support their efforts. As access to resources become more widely available, talented young Rwandans are following their passions, and the country's creative sector is showing signs of growth. I think Rwandan people have started to understand what art is into their lives, and also the value of an artist into the world. Located roughly in the geographical center of the country, the capital city of Kigali is the hub for this new generation of makers. When I started, I was very ambitious. I hoped Kestroke would become a big uh, household name in Rwanda, and I think we, we're on track to get to that goal. Mufti Nkurunziza is the founder and CEO of Guest Show, a company that specializes in CGI or computer-generated imagery. So primarily we have been serving the movie industry and uh, now also going deeper into virtual reality. But a career in animation and design wasn't Mufti's first choice. He initially wanted to be a doctor. The medicine thing didn't work out and uh, I had to fall on to something next that I loved most, which was computers. And it turned out great for me because uh, at this point I, I couldn't imagine myself doing any other thing other than this. It's like destiny, you know, things do unfold. So this is the... Albeit his second choice as an adult, looking back, this path may have been predestined in the first place. I have always had an interest in art, but I remember someone told my mom that kids who love <laughs> drawing, they don't have brains in, in school. <laughs> so that was kind of, you know, I was discouraged. But after getting access on computers and then rediscovered myself, at least in the digital form. Inspired by the visual graphics he was seeing on TV, Mufti found himself constantly wondering how they were created. And the answer turned out to be at his fingertips. I remember as you see, this is like a new industry in the most of the parts of Africa. And so it meant the only place to, to get this kind of information from was the internet. 
So I remember putting in uh, into Google search um, how to make cartoons or how to make animations, and then you know search results will come. Navigated through that and then you know found you know some uh, softwares to begin with. Fast forward three years and Gez Show is humming along. From public works initiatives to virtual fashion shows, the design studio's portfolio is growing. We have served many markets regionally, places uh, like in Kenya. Uh, we've worked with a couple clients, uh, uh, Uganda, um, and of course, uh, Rwanda, and also abroad. We've worked with some companies in the US, UK. Whether they're eating lunch together daily or battling each other in the video game Rocket League, the crew have become a tight-knit group and it's showing in their product. The main achievement is to have a solid team. If uh, you look on our work, <laughs> it is slick, you know. Uh, very few people will not believe uh, maybe stand around here. Yeah, so I would say the the biggest achievement has been to really have uh, a collective technical expertise to execute something that is really good. An impressive accomplishment considering what Mufti was up against when he started. It was difficult to find talent because of the industry. It is new. Everyone we do what I do work with pretty much had a similar upbringing, I would say, because we all didn't go to any formal school for these kind of things we do. And for Mufti, that's the power in pursuing your passions. It's also the impact of doing quality stuff and putting it out there, and also basically inspiring people to kind of see, oh wow, these kind of things could also be done here. But doing it in the local context, uh, I'd say, that's one of our contributions. This is my daughter. She's called Nera. Nera, how are you? So now we are going to play yeah, and have some fun. <laughs> Mugisha Emmanuel loves being a father. My daughter is my best friend in the world. Uh, when I am free, I spend all my time with my daughter. Mujisha is also known as Clapton Chibonge, one of Rwanda's top stand-up comedians and actors. That's why I'm a big comedian in the country, because I have something pushing me to be a good comedian. Before it was, you laugh, you go home, I go home, no problem. But for now, you have to laugh. If you don't laugh, my baby is sleeping without eating anything. <laughs> With stand-up comedy shows shuttered during the pandemic, Clapton's focus has been on his hit YouTube series, a Kenya Rwanda dialect word meaning neighbor in English. We are the place where the, the comic series called Muturanyi is normally played at. These are the buildings. Um, probably some who have watched it knows the place very well. Produced by Chibongwe's own production company, Daymakers Edutainment. Clapton and his team were awarded the YouTube Silver Creator Award for reaching the 100,000 subscriber mark, racking up more than 21 million views to date. YouTube pays me every month. I do movie, I pay. I give jobs to young talents. They act, I pay them. I have a technical team, I pay them, production team. That's good for my country. 
the kind of future that I would like for the whole company to have is to grow up and uh, him personally being uh, one of the best comedians not only in Rwanda but also in the whole Africa why not the whole world while they do have fans that click in from various countries around the world Clapton is aware that attracting an even larger global audience is attainable with one minor tweak I can do an international project like a movie which is in English because I'm a producer I can do it people love content it's like music even if you can sing in a language people doesn't understand the content matters not the language from comedy to fashion staying true to Rwandan roots is a reoccurring theme amongst the community of creators here we want to be an international brand that reflects our Rwandan heritage, but also that fuses it with the modern world. Kanyana Nadine launched her namesake fashion line, House of Kanyana, following a competition she had reluctantly entered in 2017. So my friends encouraged me to join it, but I didn't want to go, but they encouraged me, told me that I could do it, so I went for it. She placed among the finalists in the fashion category. As a result, she was able to enter an incubator program where she developed her skills while learning the business side of the industry. I became a fashion designer by profession in 2019, but my love for fashion started earlier because I used to make clothes when I was a kid make clothes for my dolls, myself. As a teenager, sewing remains something she did for fun, but at the time she wasn't aware of its career potential, so she decided to go to university and study to become an IT professional. What made me change my career plan was the love I had for fashion, because I started it as a hobby, but later on I found that it was something that could make money, so I did hesitate. <laughs> Now, her clothes are being sold in Kigali's business center, in the space where she had originally competed while she was still in school. So we are at KBC, at our showroom. So you can pass by any time and get to see our creations and many more. Two years in, and Kanyana Nadine is still acclimating to her success. I never expected people to wear something that was made by me, but every day we see them wearing it and I couldn't be any more proud. I never get used to it. One thing to get accustomed to is that the age of the Rwandan maker is here. The facilities are here, the resources are here, and the talent is here. They're homegrown and coming from abroad, all with a keen eye on rewriting the country's future through creativity.